We're here with two of my favorite guys, and uh, I want to uh, have them introduce themselves. I'm Nigel Andrews. I'm from New York City. I played with Docs from third till eighth grade. Uh, after Docs, I went to high school at Deerfield Academy up in Massachusetts, and then I went on to play lacrosse at Harvard University for four years. So my name is Omar Hajiko. Um, I started playing lacrosse my sophomore year of high school. I was first introduced to the game through City Lacs at a winter clinic at Curtis High School. I graduated from Curtis in 2015 and then went on to play lacrosse in college at Wagner College, which I graduated in 2019. And Omar, um, actually I'll start with you. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that uh, introduction to lacrosse uh, that uh, you came to at uh, the City Lacs Clinic at Curtis High School? Yeah, I mean, so like, in high, in, as a city kid, you don't really get exposed to the game of lacrosse. Like, not many people play it. Like, in terms of like the youth, like, no one really knows until you get to high school and you get to exposed to it. Then, uh, my freshman year of high school, a couple of my like best friends played lacrosse, and I never really got into it. But sophomore year, they convinced me to come to a winter clinic, and um, honestly, just fell in love with the game, and um, it kind of worked out pretty well. Like, I remember as as a high school student, you you remember two dates: uh, the first weekend in December and March 15th. The first weekend in December is the first time you get to suit up with your guys again after the season, and March 15th is the start of the actual season. That first weekend is when the City Lacs Winter Clinics happen. It's the first time for a lot of the guys that get to put on their gear again, get to pick up their sticks, just because the lack of like accessibility of fields and um, cages throughout the city. Sure, that's great. Yeah. It's good to know. Um, Nigel, uh, yeah. I understand you actually got your start in lacrosse by seeing a City Lacs clinic uh, with high school kids that Omar was just describing. And then from that, you transitioned uh, to uh, seeing a, a college game and, yeah. then, and, then, and then found out about Docs. Can you tell me a little bit yeah. more about that? So I actually went to the college game before uh, the City Glass Clinic. Um, I had never heard of lacrosse before. This was third grade. I might have been about like eight or nine. Um, and my uncle brought me and my family to a UVA Johns Hopkins final sport game. Um, and Kyle Harrison was playing, and I remember that. And I remember seeing him and him being like the only black guy on the field, and I was like, I, I kind of want to be like this guy. And I immediately just gravitated towards the, towards the game. And so after that game, we came back home, and I told my parents that I wanted to start playing lacrosse. And so just from their due diligence, they found a city glass clinic up at FDA in Harlem, where we used to live. Um, and. I went to the clinic and Kyle Harrison happened to be <laughs> one of the coaches at that clinic. And he ended up giving me a stick at the end of the clinic and I, was, I just remembered it being an amazing experience. So Nigel, you saw one of the greatest players in recent uh, college lacrosse history uh, play uh, Kyle Harrison, player of color. Yeah. Uh, interesting. And uh, right, uh, two, we, we had a clinic with him up at uh, Frederick Douglass Academy in yeah. 2008. Uh, when you came out on the docks field for the yeah. first time, uh, did you uh, had you practiced at all? What did you think? Uh, and who were your coaches, and how did they get you into the game? My coaches were um, uh, Brad Settleman and Ro uh, Rob Coglin, who were actually also two parents of kids on the team with me. Um, and I just remember them being great teachers of the game. Um, and most importantly, they wanted us to have fun. That's terrific. Yeah, uh, there's no question for Docs in our anniversary celebration, the coaches are so, uh, we've been blessed to have some great coaches and you talk about two of them. And I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute and uh, how they, you know, really developed you in the game. Uh, but uh, Omar, um, you know, you jumped on the field as a sophomore in high school, a lot older than, um, <laughs> yeah. than Nigel. And uh, tell me what your experience was to start out with with your coaches, because yeah. I know you had some really, uh, really, really great ones at uh, Curtis High School. Yeah, I mean, if, if someone would have told me, told me lacrosse like in third grade, I would have laughed in their face <laughs> and been like, what is this? So um, it's definitely a big age gap. But um, yeah, I fell in the game, I fell in the game of sophomore year. Like, I saw and I knew this immediately was for me. And I was playing attack at the time my sophomore year. It was on JV, and then I transitioned over to a goalie my junior year of uh, high school. So that was my position I ended up playing in college. So I only was exposed to the goalie position wow. my junior and senior year of high wow. school. Uh, and then I went on to play Division I lacrosse at Wagner College, and I actually ended up walking on. Um, 
So that was a kind of a great kind of opportunity. But the coaches are really what played the biggest part, right? Um, I had a coach, Pizzarelli, who was the head coach at the time. He came up to me and talked to me and was like, hey, how do you feel about being a goalie? And I was like, whatever is needed for the team. And he saw something in me that at the time I didn't and kind of transitioned me over to goalie. Um, and I, I remember junior year, like I was like, I don't know what's going on and like kind of trying to pick up the game, any drills, watching YouTube videos and whatnot. And then going into my senior year, I was exposed to who's now the assistant coach at Curtis, um, Chris Gerlach. Uh, coach Gerlach great served, guy. yeah, great guy, served as a role model, a role model, a great coach, not just for me, but for many other people. And he was actually a goalie at Wagner itself. Let me, let me also, uh, first of all, say Coach Gerlach and Coach Pizzarelli are great teachers yeah. as well as coaches. Second, um, warm spot in my heart for you because I was a goalie as well. And uh, walk, b picking it up in your junior year of high school and then being a Division One goalie as a walk-on is an incredible accomplishment. So both of you guys are shining examples of um, content, now that you've played through college lacrosse, Division One. both of you, are continuing now to give back to the game. And giving back, especially on the city lax side, to try to give kids opportunities that, that, and access to the game that they wouldn't have. Nigel, you're a board member on city lax Omar, you're one of our uh, passionate uh, volunteer and, and uh, core coaches in our winter clinics, so forth. Maybe uh, can you explain or talk about why you're giving back, why you're so passionate about that, and why you think you can maybe make a difference and, our, and how City Lacks can maybe make a difference in, uh, in kids' lives. The lacrosse community is more than just the game of lacrosse. I think being a member of the lacrosse community, you get exposed to so many different things that can be impactful in your life and the community is so close with each other because it's not that big everybody I, I like to joke around that everybody has one degree of separation from everybody else within the cross community it's true um, it's very true yeah so just having that network behind you is so powerful and i think giving new york city kids access to that community will be impactful for their lives for the rest of their lives um, and so that's kind of how I've gotten to the place where I am now is through that community and through the connections I've made through lacrosse. And lacrosse is also a sport that prioritizes academics. And so they go one and the same. So you can't be a great, you can't be a great lacrosse player playing at the highest level without being a great student. Um, and so that's definitely driven me through middle school and high school to get my academics done and do it right and um, be committed in them. Because and, I know, and that message you're trying to uh, yeah, hopefully exactly. uh, now that uh, as a docs board member involved in a lot of our programming and stuff, uh, how are you seeing yourself trying to instill that exactly. into young, uh, into the young exactly. people in the City Lax program? Um, uh, Omar, same thing. How um, you know you're 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 volunteering with us? Uh, what's the message there for the kids, and how can City Lax help those kids? Yeah, I mean. Uh, the message I like to tell all the kids I coach is like the opportunity to play at the next level is there. Like it's a matter of if you want it and instilling the confidence to want to play at the next level. A lot of the kids they'll watch like film or maybe watch some college games, top level D1, D1 college games, be like how can I ever play here? But like what I like to do is instill a confidence in them and be like hey there is opportunities for you to play you just kind of have to kind of put it into work. and give them, and because the love is there for the game, it's just a matter of having them make the right choices and meet the right people. Um, and kind of adding on to what Nigel said, the community is kind of what kind of brings you, is why this game will take you to the next level and just in life in general, not just in, in sports. Um, I mean, I've met some of my best friends, mentors, coaches through the game of lacrosse. Sure. Yeah. You guys have brought out a bunch of things that I think are really the, it really crystallizes the City Lacks mission and how the docs community is very much part of that. Uh, City Lax obviously gave you an opportunity and even gave you an opportunity mm. in, uh, when you first saw that clinic and it's, 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 it's really influenced the trajectory of both your lives and now you're young professionals. And I think that City Lax as an organization uh, with the docs community uh, being a backbone and support of it uh, can hopefully uh, create uh, opportunities for dozens and dozens more uh, young men like you, young women, and I think that's really what I'm hopeful that we see that the two organizations, two organizations, one lacrosse community in New York City.
Yep. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank the talk. Appreciate it.